Hey guys, today I'm going to be sharing with you my fangirl favorites for September 2021. So this is probably going to be a relatively quick and to the point video, I suppose, uh, especially after all the excitement. <laughs> Especially after all the excitement I had last month. Uh, if you happen to miss my August fangirl favorites, uh, I did share some of my uh, vacation that I did uh, last month. So if you're interested in any of my vacation back in August, yeah, definitely go check out my August fangirl favorites. Uh, so yeah, after the excitement, if, if you want to call that excited, I guess, after the excitement of August, September went pretty much downhill and my boring life came back once again. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this, like I said, it's probably gonna be pretty quick and to the point. Make it, make it easier for editing and watching later, I guess, when I get down to it. Uh, so yeah, what, what did I get up to in the month of September? Yeah, guys, um, I did make it around finally to quite a number of um, uh, movies. Thank God, uh, I'm just severely behind on movies you guys and i've i've said this in the past that i am a big tv watcher like my obsession is tv i can sit and binge hours of tv practically all day if i wanted to and i'd be totally happy but for some reason i just have a hard time forcing myself to watch movies and if you think about it i mean what's the difference <laughs> you know what's the difference between watching movies and binging a tv show you know um but yeah i mean there's just something about tv that i love and prefer i i guess i love spending an extended amount of time with characters and an extended amount of time within a world which sometimes a movie doesn't give you and sometimes isn't that satisfying i guess but I did finally get around to a bunch of movies this month. Um, over on Disney Plus, um, I finally watched Soul and Raya and the Last Dragon. You guys, that's how far behind I am on movies. Because, yes, yeah, Soul came out back in, what, November of 2020? And then Raya and the Last Dragon came out sometime back in the spring, something like that. Um, but yeah, Soul and Raya and the Last Dragon, both those movies in particular, I really enjoyed those, you guys. Um, I guess starting with Soul. Soul, if you don't know what Soul is about, it is a Pixar movie and it follows a, uh, a grown man. Um, you know, I never knew how old he was. How old was he? Was he supposed to be kind of like middle age or was he supposed to be in his 30s? I'm not quite sure how old he was supposed to be. If he was like in his 30s or more like middle age, I'm not really quite sure. Like, you know, like more like in his 40s or something. But yeah, it follows a, a man who he, he dreams of becoming like a a, a jazz musician of some sort uh, but then something happens and he now this ain't a spoiler you guys because this this literally happens within the first like 10 minutes of the movie and I mean the trailer kind of spoils it anyway if you want to call it a spoiler but uh this man he pretty much dies <laughs> You guys, yeah, I guess, uh, you, they never downright come out and just are like, hey, he died, you know, I mean, it, it's still like a Disney Pixar movie and they gotta keep it, you know, kind of tame and understandable for, for children, you know, but, I mean, my understanding is that he, he straight up died. <laughs> and he goes to the afterlife and uh, he meets with, like, uh, another soul and uh, this, this, this movie was, it was really cute and like really just charming and I think just a really clever brilliant way to portray I don't know I guess portray death and the afterlife and to per personify a soul I guess if that makes sense um and the way they do that is like souls are like these little glowing bluish orb looking things and there's like this whole structure in the afterlife of like how souls are handled and where they go and how they're born and how you get personalities and stuff like that it was a whole thing you guys uh, but i did i ended up really quite liking soul because i was actually kind of worried about that one because the trailers were definitely not doing it for me i was like this looks a little boring to me but i ended up really liking it and it was actually a very mature pixar movie I mean, Pixar tends to be very mature anyway, I think, but this one was definitely very mature, definitely much more intended for a, a an adult audience than a child audience, because to be quite honest, I don't know how a child would even be able to begin to understand or process kind of the, the themes and concepts going on in the movie, because it gets really deep, you guys. It gets pretty deep with some of the themes and messages and 
uh, me and my sister, we were even afterwards just talking about trying to kind of process certain plot points and certain character things, you know? It, it, we actually had to have a conversation about it, you know? I mean, it, it, it wasn't something like, oh, we watched it, that's, it's done and over with, you know? It was, that, it was one of those kind of Pixar movies. It's like, you had to think and process it, and I, I really like that. Uh, and then, like I said, I also got around to Raya and the Last Dragon. Um, that follows a young woman in like this fantasy world and uh, the world has pretty much gone to hell essentially and uh, dragons used to exist in this world but they don't no longer except for one there's one dragon so yeah Raya and this last dragon <laughs> as the title says uh, they have to pretty much save the world and bring back the dragons and save the people and all this stuff. Um, it's it's very straightforward, kind of standard in some ways, but oh boy, it was a really good movie, you guys. Uh, a, a beautiful to look at, great characters, uh, just such a vibrancy to it. Despite that the movie, it, it, there there's kind of a darkness to it almost. And considering it's like this, like the, it's uh, it's almost like the end of the world, and all this doom and gloom has happened. But there's still like this vibrancy to it in color, and uh, it was it was really really cute. I loved it. Um, yeah, Raya was definitely a fantastic uh, heroine. Uh, you know, uh, was she a princess? I guess she was a princess, right? Because, I mean, is she going to now be part of the Disney princess lineup? I hope she is. Was she a princess? You know, sometimes I'm just always confused with who to classify as a princess, because Disney does have girls in the, the the princess lineup that aren't technically really princesses but they're they're, they're still part of the lineup um but yeah was raya did i miss something in the movie was she a princess now i'm questioning because i can't remember <laughs> uh, but either way uh finally got around to those two disney plus movies love them um yeah i, I i'm still far behind i still need to catch up on uh luca and Black Widow, and Cruella, and Shang-Chi just came out. I'm just all sorts of behind on Disney. Yeah, guys, I'll get there. <sighs> I'm, especially the Marvel stuff, I am ready for the Marvel stuff, like, like Black Widow and Shang-Chi and whatnot. I am ready for all of that. It's like I've been catching up perfectly fine with the Marvel TV shows, that's for sure. Um, speaking of Marvel TV shows, you guys, has anybody else been watching uh, what If, the animated cartoon. Um, I freaking love What If, you guys. I, at first, was not thinking I was going to like it or dig it that much, um, but I am very impressed with What If. If you don't know what What If is about, it, it takes place in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and it's pretty much alternate versions of things that could have happened. Like in episode one, uh, it's What If Peggy Carter became Captain America, pretty much. Um, there's another episode, uh, what if our favorite superheroes became zombies? Uh, what if Doctor Strange, instead of losing, you know, his hands getting messed up, he, he, he messed, you know, his heart, uh, his, he, he lost his heart, essentially. You gotta kind of figure out in that episode what that means by losing his heart, because it's, it's really sad, <laughs> you guys. Um, uh, yeah, another episode was what if all the Avengers just died? Who, who's left to avenge the world, you know? Uh, all the episodes, seriously. And, it, and it's animated. It's an animated cartoon, you guys. Uh, I love the animation and the style of it. And it, I was worried it was going to be very cartoony and too kid, you know, like too just way too kid friendly and stuff like that. Like I would just kind of be bored with it. But it's actually pretty dark in places. Some of the episodes, especially the Doctor Strange episode that was focusing a lot on Doctor Strange, that one especially was really, really dark and depressing. Um, it, it's a very serious cartoon uh, a series in some ways. I mean, there is definitely levity and humor in there, but it, it does go to some dark and interesting places that I actually kind of appreciate. But yeah, has anybody else been watching What If? Because I, I definitely been loving that. And then as far as some other movies I've gotten around to, heading on over to Netflix this time, uh, I finally got around to that Witcher animated movie. What, what, what was it called? Witcher Nightmare of the Wolf? Something like that. Uh, I initially just was like, huh, I don't really want to watch this, watch this Witcher animated movie. I mean, as, as much as I did enjoy the first season of the television series, I was like, I just don't know about an animated cartoon, but I was like, I'm going to watch it because what if it's important for like season two or something? I don't know. I, I kind of got paranoid about that, you know? That, that's how my brain works, you guys. I got paranoid like, oh well, god, what if I don't watch this cartoon and then something happens in the season two of The Witcher and then I'm just really lost and confused because I don't have background details about something? <laughs> 
weird, you guys. So, I, I, I did finally watch Nightmare of the Wolf, and I liked it. It, it was good. The, the, the animation was definitely really fantastic, and if, if anything, I, I started thinking, man, I need to watch Castlevania, because <laughs> Castlevania is a TV series, and that's also on Netflix, and I was like, man, I really need to watch Castlevania after watching this Witcher uh, a cartoon, apparently. Um, but yeah, I digress. Uh, the Witcher movie, animated movie, it was good. I liked it. I don't know if I would ever really sit and watch it again, but it was fine watching it, um, you know, for, for, for a one-time only sort of thing. And it, it's, it's like a prequel to what happens in The Witcher, um, uh, following a character that is briefly mentioned in the, the TV show. Um, and it does have a nice little cliffhanger to it. Um, I won't kind of go from there, but there's a nice little cliffhanger too. Like, ah, okay, this is how we also kind of tie into the, the the TV series and whatnot. Um, um, but yeah, it uh, it was it was great. I did like it. The animation was great. It was definitely bloody, bloody and gory. There was a little bit of nudity in there. Uh, yeah, the voice actors in there. Theo James was pay playing the main character. I love me some Theo James. You guys, I can listen to his voice all day. Uh, Laura Pulver was doing a voice. I love Laura Pulver as well. Yeah, Graham McTavish. I love Graham McTavish as well. Um, so yeah, if you love those those actors and yeah, it, it had a nice little British cast to it and whatnot, you'll definitely like the movie, I think. And then another movie I got around to on Netflix was Crooked House. And for some reason, I thought Crooked House was something that maybe had just filmed you know, like back in 2020, and you know, Aaron in 2021 here, you know, but no, it was actually filmed way back in 2017. So it's it's a couple years old, which I wasn't aware of, aware of at all. Um, but yeah, this stars uh, Glenn Close and Max Irons, um, a, a, a really great cast here. Uh, and it's an Agatha Christie adaptation uh, based off of her book called Crooked House. Um, so I do, I love me all things Agatha Christie, you guys, sign me up. Um, and I loved this movie, you guys, and believe it or not, on IMDb, you know, this is what I hate about IMDb sometimes, because the ratings, I just don't understand the ratings on IMDb, because it's like, I feel like people are just rating things very low just for the hell of it, because like on IMDb, it has like a, it has like a 6.5 rating or something, and like that, like it's a bad movie or something, but I found it a really enjoyable movie. I was thoroughly entertained and engaged and, and whatnot. Um, but yeah, what Crooked House is about, it's about uh, Max Iron's character. He's like a private detective and a, 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 a past girlfriend of his needs his help because her grandfather has recently passed away and she thinks it was murder. <laughs> of course, it's Agatha, Agatha Christie. Of course, there has to be some sort of murder going on. So she thinks it was murder and she thinks someone in the household has done something because this whole freaking family is like really weird and estranged and they all have kind of issues with each other, issues with the grandfather who has passed away and whatnot. So that's kind of the whole premise of uh, Crooked House, and I feel like that's about all I can say. But oh boy, I loved it. I did not see kind of the ending coming at all, uh, because I thought it was going to... I kind of had my, my head wrapped around a couple people, like, okay, I think it might be these people who murdered the grandfather, but then, oh no, in typical Agatha Christie fashion, it just flips, and I was like, what? <laughs> And I loved it. So yeah, if you love all things Agatha Christie, you have a Netflix account, I definitely recommend the movie Crooked House because it was a great time. <laughs> so as I conclude this video, yeah guys, let's talk about some Funko Pops really quickly. Funko uh, recently did a lineup of a bunch of Alice in Wonderland Pops. They've done Alice in Wonderland in the past before, um, but they just came out with a whole new batch and it's a bunch of, it's a batch of, of new characters that they've never done before because in the past they've always focused on like the Cheshire Cat and the White Rabbit and Alice and the Mad Hatter, uh, blah -de blah you know. Uh, so yeah, this batch I was really impressed with this batch because it's a bunch of characters it's like oh I would have never thought for them to do Funko Pops for these characters and so I was really thrilled and excited about that. So first up is the walrus and the carpenter and I love this. I was like oh my goodness the walrus and the carpenter because I love that part of the movie and I was a little upset because I wish that they had come out with some little oysters. If you've seen the the cartoon you know what I'm talking about. Uh, I wish they would have came maybe with about uh, three three or four little oysters 
in this little pack as well because that would have been really cute. <laughs> and then they also came out with the Queen and the King and they've come out with the Queen of Hearts in the past before um, but this this time it came with the King and I love that because he is a little tiny guy in the cartoon ain't he? <laughs> so yeah I love this little combo. After Funko did so many freaking versions of the Mad Hatter they finally came out with the March Hare. Thank God I love the March Hare as well and look he has a little cup of tea. <laughs> They also came out with a Tweedledee and Tweedledum. It's just pretty much the exact same pop, you guys, but it's like, you gotta, you gotta get them both. You gotta get them both, because <laughs> it's Tweedledee and Tweedledum. You gotta get them both. And then I really like this one with Alice with uh, the flowers. I thought that was really cute, and I really like just the detail of that in there. Their little faces on the flowers. So you guys, that is it. In the comments below, let me know all of your things that you got up to in the month of September. So that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you like this video, you may like these other videos. Bye guys.